test of the ejection system. I've been messing with the design a little bit. I I think one of the issues is I didn't have snap to angles on when I first started building because that wasn't on by default so there's weird all sorts of weird things going on. I may kind of just rebuild it from scratch but playing with the separatrons I'm trying to kind of get them so that they look like they're lined up accurately. I don't know if this is working or not. Hold on. Alright well let's try it out. Poof. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Huh. Whoop. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll call that a uh, successful failure. <laughs> this is the Ford 5. Oh, uh, yeah, I gotta, I'm going to test these again. They got all wonky with the... Uh, directions that they go and stuff. Um, I didn't mean for these to be angled down. <laughs> what I did, did was did a little bit of playing around with the snap to angles on and then play, playing with the center of mass, center of lift to try to get those lined up fairly well. So that's why things kind of got moved forward a little bit. So first of all, let's just do a test of the ejection system because if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Uh, other things could go horribly awry and we might die. Still not so good. <laughs> hmm. I'll work on that later, maybe. Uh... No, I have a better idea how to fix it. I'm going to call that one success. Stayed off the ground, stayed vertical, giving enough time to launch the parachute. So here we are on, I believe, the Ford 7. And uh, I think it's a little more successful. Should be. Let's see what the difference is in the uh, center of thrust. No, center of mass versus center of lift do. Spooled up, breaks off. This thing has got some power. Oh, and I put advanced SAS on. Whoa. Uh oh. Oh, Not as good as uh, the plain SAS <laughs> for control. time we're going to take off at about 50% uh, thrust. See if I can keep control of it, no SAS. Uh, let's go find controls. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Maybe I don't need to let them spool up, that was a bit violent of a, a start. Gonna keep it on the center line if we can. It's wanting to pull left, that can't be good for symmetry. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Okay, I put the plain SAS back on. So we're going to start a little bit slower. It's jittery.
and it's rolly. <laughs> Does that help if I give it more thrust? Is it really 200 some meters a second already? Oh, it's ugly. Nine thousand meters. Four hundred meters per second. This thing is fast. Eleven thousand meters. So it was about fourteen seven or so we kicked in last time. Stick with that. Somewhere around now. That speed goes up now. I am purposely trying to skew to the south a little. Okay, let's watch the attitude. Still wanting to pitch back. I thought that was something I'd be able to fix. It's a little better, but that's lowering my thrust a bit. As you can see, my speed isn't even increasing. Hmm. I my thrust a lot to get it to not pitch. We need to get out of the atmosphere before where these things can be really good. I wonder if maybe we just don't need the SAS at this point. Try to fly it manually. Let's give that a try. Well, it seems to be working okay. Just a little more fiddling. We're at full throttle. Two tanks of fuel left. I'm going to cut the engine now. Check how we're doing. Not great. Nope, we need to keep going. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Game control. Last tank of fuel. We're up above the atmosphere, so oh, I do want to convert it as much as I can to horizontal. So let's chase prograde. Definitely not orbital again. That's fine. It's not meant to be. It's meant to be suborbital. How do we do in the end? Oh, gear. Whoops. Yeah, 90 clicks. Oh, too far south? Is that a lake there? It does look like a. Oh, yeah, okay, no, it's not a lake. It's kind of a, an inlet from the ocean. All right, probably fast forward now to when we're back in the atmosphere.
Uh oh. Uh oh. Hang on to your lunch, <laughs> Fredless, I believe. This is what they call it in Top Gun a flat flat spin. <laughs> okay, how much altitude do we have? Nine, eight thousand meters. Okay. Time to start trying to recover. I got this, I got this. Not when I'm pointing retrograde. This is five thousand meters. Come on, there's got to be some aerodynamics in this thing. Seriously? <laughs> Retrograde? <laughs> or are we just following, following straight down? Can we not fire up those? Oh, the engines! Activate. Activate. Oh, we're not going to make it. Hell, yeah, we might have made it. <laughs> this worked rather admirably, though. I love that they put swimming animations in. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Here is the Ford 9. Fredless back in the seat after a nice suborbital suborbital flight with a slight incident landing. Two more fuel tanks and fuel lines, so that'll give us a little bit more delta V. We might potentially at least make it further suborbital. And uh yeah. Let's see how this goes again. I'm gonna fly from outside this time just to see Oh and I switched some wing positions. Let's see what it looks like from out here. This is gonna weigh more. Probably gonna end up using more fuel. Uh oh. Apparently it's a little more unstable as well. This is just a really ugly plane. <laughs> uh, let's see, those struts didn't need to go there. Oh well. Anal about where my struts go. That's incredibly dirty. So I was just looking at the uh, situation currently in our solar system. We have Stross 4 orbiting around Gilly. That's where we left off there. Stross 4 is in good shape. Uh, I believe plenty of fuel left to make a return to Kerbin. Although, and the angle, uh, I don't know. Is the angle? Don't know what the angle is supposed to be for that. I was just checking uh, to see about Dr. 01 on Duna. And, uh, what the angle needs to be there again, because I'd already forgotten. And it's 44 degrees, and they're at about 33 degrees, and unfortunately, Kerbin's going to catch up past. So it looks like 
uh, they're going to have to wait a year <laughs> before we can launch a rescue mission. And that's assuming that's the next thing I do when I don't you know, do something else that takes more than a year and mess up the cycles again. And they've, <laughs> they've already been there a year. No, I, I can't remember how long it took them to get there and then land, but they've been there a while. The, he's been away from home for a year, 155 days. Poor guy. So rescue mission, certainly something to think about coming up. I'll have to make a uh, three-person lander uh, interplanetary spacecraft, which is going to be much bigger than than the ones we've been working on. I guess it doesn't have to be much bigger, but it'll be probably be a little bit bigger. All it has to do is, well, no, it has to land. See, it's got to land on Duna and take off again and then have enough velocity to get back or else stay in a parking orbit and be rescued again by another ship. So maybe I'll only take one pilot in a three-person pod. That might be a good idea. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about that for a bit.